All right, guys, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and finish um, part two of lesson 18 in module two. Okay. Um, in the first part, we mainly focus on greatest common factor. Okay, now we're going to go over least common multiple. Okay, so it says choose one of these problems that has not yet been solved. Solve it together on your student page. Okay. Um, that was more for station work, so we won't worry about this yet. So let's look at the next row. Okay, it says find the least common multiple of these pairs. And we're going to go through them together. Okay, so the first one we have is 9 and 12. So remember, it is not greatest common factor. So we're not writing down the numbers that can go into 9 and 12. Okay, when we're talking about least common multiple, we're skip counting by that number. Okay, so this would be 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63. Okay, then for the 12s, I'd go 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72. And I can stop there because I've already found the least common multiple. Okay. Looking at both rows, the only numbers that I can see that match are 36. So the LCM, the least common multiple of 9 and 12, is 36. Okay. Let's try 8 and 18. 8 and 18. Okay. Let's find the multiples of 8, 16, 24. And let's go ahead and do 18 as well. Okay, remember all you have to do is add 20 and then take 2 away. And I have already found the least common multiple. Looking at both lists, I see that both 72 and 72 are on both lists. So my LCM comes out to 72. All right, good guys. Let's go over four and 30, okay? I'm gonna start off with 30 first, um, just because it has, it's going to have the least amount of multiples and we're gonna see what four can go into, okay? So looking at this, Four can't go into 30 evenly, but I think it can go into 60. So let's just double check by writing out the multiples of four. And again, I'm just skip counting by fours, so it's not very difficult. And I was correct, okay? 64 does go into 60, so 60 is going to be my least common multiple. Okay, let's go ahead and get 60 is going to be our least common multiple for 4 and 30. Now let's do 12 and 30. Okay, so we know 30 was just 60, 90, 120, 150. Let's go ahead and do 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 90, or sorry, 72, 84, 96, 108, and 120. Okay, and I look at both lists and I have to find the ones that match. And the smallest ones that do match are 60 and 60. So my LCM for 12 and 30 is 60. All right, one more. We have 20 and 50. Okay, this is 100, 150, 200, 250, 
but yeah, dude, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. This is 40, 60, 80, and 100. And I think I can stop there as well. I have two that match, which is 100. So the LCM of 20 and 50 is 100. Okay, awesome guys. So let's go on to some word problems real quick. Letter A tells us hot dogs come packed 10 in a package. Hot dog buns come packed eight in a package. If we want one hot dog for each bun for a picnic with none left over, what is the least amount of each we need to buy? How many packages of each item would we have to buy? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find the least common multiple of 10 and 8. Okay, this is 20, 30, 40, 50. And I'm going to stop there. This is 16, 24, 32, 40. Okay, so I found my least common multiple, the LCM equals 40. Okay, but we aren't done yet. It's telling us that the hot dogs come 10 in a package. Okay. So what is 40 divided by 10? It is four. So we're going to need four packages of hot dogs. Okay. Now the buns come eight in a package. 40 divided by eight is five. So we're going to need five packages of buns and this is our answer for letter A. <clears throat> All right, let's go over letter B. So it says, starting at 6 a.m., a bus stop at my street corner, every, a bus stops at my street corner every 15 minutes. Also starting at 6 a.m., a taxi cab comes by every 12 minutes. What is the next time both a bus and a taxi are at the corner at the same time? Okay. <clears throat> So we need to find the least common multiple of 15 and 12. And this is going to be 30, 45, 60, 75, okay, and 90. Now let's do 12, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. And I have found my least common multiple, the LCM equals 60 but we aren't done, okay? We're talking about minutes, so at 60 minutes after 6 a.m., both the bus and the taxi cab are at the same corner. Now, 60 minutes after 6 a.m. is what time? That is 7 a.m., okay? So this is our answer. Okay, letter C, this says, Two gears in a machine are aligned by a mark drawn from the center of one gear to the center of the other. If the first gear has 24 teeth and the second gear has 40 teeth, how many revolutions of the first gear are needed until the marks are lined up again? So we need to find the least common multiple of 24 and 40. Okay? Now... <clears throat> Counting up by 24s, this is 48, 72, 96, 120, 144. This is 40s, this is going to be 80, 120, 160, 200. And our greatest or our least common multiple is going to be 120. Okay. And now we need to figure out about the first gear and how many revolutions it needs to mark up. So the first gear is gonna be 120 divided by 24. We count how many times we counted, one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be five revolutions. Let's go ahead and do the second gear as well, just because we can. And 40, 120 divided by 40 is going to be three. That's going to give us four, three revolutions. Okay, so they lined up when the first gear is at five revolutions and the second gear is at three revolutions. Okay, letter D. Is the LCM of a pair of numbers ever equal to one of the numbers? Explain with an example. Okay, so this is going to be yes. Okay, because... 
if the smaller number or if the bigger number is a multiple of the smaller number. So an example of this would be three and six. Okay, three is the least common multiple. I mean, three is going to be <clears throat> smaller than six. So three and six, three goes into six, so six is going to be the least common multiple. Okay, another example would be 50 and 100, okay? The bigger number is a multiple of the smaller number, so 100 is the LCM. Now, is the LCM of a pair of numbers ever less than both numbers? This is going to be no. It can't be less because we're skip counting up. So multiples are equal to or greater than. <clears throat> All right, guys, that was station two. I'm going to skip station three and go on to station four. Okay, and this is going to deal with the distributive property. Okay, so study the, these examples of how the factors apply to the distributive property. I'm going to look at this example here. Okay, what they did here is they have a problem, 15 plus 25. They have to find the greatest common factor first. Okay, so we're back at greatest common factor, the biggest number that can go into that number, which was 5. They need to break up this problem what you do to 5 to get 15 you multiply it by 3 what you do to 5 to get 25 you multiply it by 5 then they put the parentheses in together they're going to add these together okay and then you have 5 times 3 plus 5 okay this is 8 so 5 times 8 equals 40 okay and that's what they have here and we're going to go through these together. If you have any questions, let me know after. Okay. This is just something to recognize later if you see it on a test. Um, or if they ask you to apply the distributor property, you know how to do it. Okay. So letter number one says find the G GCF from the two numbers and rewrite the sum using the distributive property. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is find the the greatest common factor of 12 and 18. Okay, so I have 12 and 18. The factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. 18 is 1, 2, 3, 6, and 9, and 18. I have to find the greatest common factor, which is 6. So six is my greatest common factor. Now I need to apply the distributive property, okay? What do I do to six to get 12? Well, I multiply it by two. So my first part is gonna be six and in parentheses is gonna be two. Remember, if you ever see a number by a parentheses, that means to multiply. Then I'm going to add this. What do I do to six to get 18? I multiply it by three. Okay, and then I write an equal sign. Now the next thing we have to do is distribute these together into the same parentheses. And the six is still gonna be outside of the parentheses. Inside of the parentheses is gonna be two plus three. Okay, and then I write an equal sign. Two plus three is five. So six times five is gonna equal 30. Okay, and our answer from the beginning is 30. So we know we did the distributive property right. Let's look at number two. We have 42 and 14. Okay, 42 has a lot of factors. Okay, but let's do 14 first, just to give us an idea, okay? So it's either gotta be one, two, seven, or 14, okay? and. I think 14 goes into 42, and I am correct. It is four times. So the GCF is 14, okay? So now let's apply our distributive property. 
14 goes into 42 three times, okay? And 14 goes into itself once. Now, we put this in the same parentheses. This is going to be 14 times 3 plus 1. And this is going to equal 14 times 4. Okay, and 14 times 4 is going to be 56. And that is our answer. All right, guys, so just the first thing you need to do is apply, is find the greatest common factor, okay, and then stretch out the problem, okay? Multiply the greatest common factor by what it needs to reach the original numbers. Put the same numbers in the parentheses together. Add the problem, what's inside of the parentheses, and then multiply at the end, okay? So you have 36 and 27, okay? The greatest common factor equals nine, okay? This one's pretty easy, and I can just tell right away. So the greatest common factor is nine, okay? In order to get 36, I have to multiply by four, and I'm going to add this in order to get 27. I'm going to multiply by 3. And my new problem is going to be 9 times the quantity of 4 plus 3. Okay, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So 9 times 7 equals 63. All right, guys, a couple more. Go ahead and try these on your own. Just apply the same <clears throat> strategies as the other problems that we did. Okay, try these, at, try these on a scratch piece of paper real quick. Pause the video, and you will check your answers in a bit. Okay, so you should have tried these on your own. The greatest common factor of 16 and 72 is 8. Okay, so in order to get 8, you have to multiply 8, or 16, you have to multiply 8 times 2. Okay, and then 8 times 9 equals 72. We're going to put them in the same, uh, we're going to put them into the same uh, parentheses, and then we're going to add this, 9 plus 2 is 11, so 8 times 11 equals 88, okay? Last one, 44 and 33, right off the bat, I know the answer to this, the greatest common factor equals 11, okay? It's the biggest number that can go into both of those numbers, okay? So now, 11 goes into 44 four times, and 11 goes into 33 three times. We add these up, and we get 11 times 7, okay? And we get 77. And that is our answer. All right, guys, <clears throat> that was... The rest of lesson 18, tomorrow we will do lesson 19, and Wednesday we will prepare for a review, okay? Sounds good. Have a great day.